again for the first game of the day. On one side, we have Delta Dawn coached by Santi Torres and featuring one of the highest rated players in the tournament, Summer Needs, who holds a four goal women's handicap. She won this tournament back in 2021 and is looking to lead her team back to the final. On the other side here is Nebraska Sunset with another four goaler and Reagan Leitner, who is joined by Winnie Branscombe. And you may recognize that name. She played and won with LaFay in the U.S. Open Women's Polo Championship this past season. Yeah, Tony. yeah, that's right. Two red helmets there for the Delta Dawn team in the yellow jerseys. Rory Knox and Naomi Marlowe. Naomi in the back right now. Taller of the two, a little darker hair you can see there. And you mentioned it, Rory has that leather helmet. A little tough to see on our screen, but we'll do our best to keep pick these ladies apart if you're a little newer to this Knights Polo. Some future stars again, Winnie Branscombe. We've seen her already on the big stage of the U.S. Open Women's Championship. And I'm sure we'll see more of these ladies in the future competing in those tournaments, Toby. Looks like we're going to take a minute here. I think we have a national anthem on the field just before we get things rolling here. Again, Delta Dawn will start with 0.5, a half goal handicap. And it looks like we're getting proper player introductions field side here as the Nebraska Sunset team being introduced. There's Reagan Leitner in the white helmet, followed up by Witty Branscombe. Playing number four, she has the royal blue helmet on. All right, here we go with Delta Dawn getting introduced here in the pink helmet looks like Lauren Patois and there is the formerly mentioned Rory Knox and finally Summer Nice black helmet playing number four again four goal women's handicap two of the highest rated ladies in the tournament going head to head here in Summer Nice and Reagan Leitner so it looks like the umpires are set in the We'll get these teams lined up and get this game underway. Again, we've got four games today, two in the girls' division and then two semifinals in the open division.
All right, so just a couple of seconds here. Looks like the umpire is communicating with the timekeeper, making sure everybody's all set. You can see Winnie Branscombe playing number four. She's going to start in the front of the throw, and it looks like. Should be a very good game. This Nebraska Sunset team defending champions. Two of the four players coming back. Again, they're coached by Jesse Prey. And looks like we're about set to go. The ball's about to be put into play. Again, Jesse Bray coaching Nebraska Sunset. Santi Torres coaching Delta Dawn. And out of the back, it's Winnie Branscombe. She's going to take this ball on a breakaway, looking for the first goal right out of the gates. Winnie can't quite get back to it. Will she run out of room? That ball is rolling, rolling. Still on the field, though, and there's the back shot by summer niece coming in for it now patois gets a back shot off but there is lightner to send one back towards goal inkson trying to get turned on it a bit of a traffic jam ensues there and it looks like it's going to be stopped here whistle on the play we've got a horseshoe on the field we'll wait for the umpires to make the official call take another look here great turn by hinkson and there you can see, we'll see it one more time here, I believe. Yes, yeah, Patois coming over on the wrong side. She had to stay near side. So we'll have a spot hit. And this is going in favor of Nebraska Sunset penalty two. Reagan Leitner steps up and puts it through. First goal of the game from the field. And that gives... Nebraska Sunset, a half goal lead, one to 0.5 again, Delta Dawn. A nine goal team. Sorry, Toby, nine goal team, Delta Dawn against the 10 goal Nebraska Sunset. And there's Reagan Leitner with the first goal of the day via the penalty two. ball now is going to be Reagan next one there uh, it looks like it'll be taken again here oh a bit of an override there from Winnie she gets that ball back under control Branscombe takes off running here look at this good looking black horse she's on going to the goal she winds up she shoots towards that goal and whoa look at this Nebraska sunset is now got a two or I should say a, a goal and a half lead here Two to 0.5 on the board. What a run. What a beautiful horse we see there. Very nice looking horse. Second breakaway run we've seen from Winnie Branscombe. This time she gets it done. What a fantastic play. And what an improvement this young lady has made in the last year, year and a half. And she's only going to get better. And Toby, I mean, polo horses in her blood. Her mom used to work for Steve Orthwine Sr., became a veterinarian. So Winnie grew up riding with her mom and the Orthwine family. So some good coaching right there. Absolutely. And here comes another great uh, polo player right here from a polo family. This is Summer Niece, her dad, Tiger. I used to play with him back in the day in the 16 goal. Here comes, she can't get back to it. Good defensive work right there. And now the ball is going to be picked up here by Reagan. Look at Reagan taking this ball. She turns it in the goal mouth with confidence here. She checks and lets the defender go fly past her, takes it back to the right. What a move right here by Reagan. Very impressed. Summer comes in and steals it away on the near side. But looks like Leitner gets back to it. Well, let's that one get away from her a little bit. And now it's going to be picked up and turned back around here by Naomi. 
She gets hooked on the play. Open back shot. Excuse me, tail shot. And now that ball is going to get picked up by Hinkson. Ava and both players going to the ball on the offside there, but it doesn't look like we're going to see a whistle on this play. Summer can't quite keep it alive. Now, near side neck shot. Looking good there from Rory. Trying to keep this one going. And it's going to be Reagan getting into a sword fight there with Summer Knees. Summer touching that ball. Gets out of there. Gets it moving right here. Summer looking good. Looking to get her team on the board for the first time today. Takes a shot. She doesn't connect. Here comes another attack. And it's going to be a back shot right here to center this ball up. First one to get turned. Lauren Patois. Patois is in the red zone. She doesn't connect. And it's going to be taken back out of the danger zone right there. And coming in, Summer's going to turn this ball back in front of the pack. Summer Nice turns this ball back around to the right, to the inside. Reagan gets out of her way a little bit there. Now, here comes Summer's shot at the goal. Looks like she's going to be able to get this one done right here. Well done, Summer. Gets her team on the board for the first time today to make the score now one and a half to two. Or should I say two to, to one and a half. Showing off some great ball handling skills early here in the first chucker. Take a look at Summer Nice. Gets the ball turned. Gets it through the pack and then a beautiful neck shot finish. And she's had a couple chances already and finally gets a well-deserved goal. It looks like we'll, we might have a little mid-chucker break here as the ladies are letting their horses walk out, Toby. But you said it, another great polo family. Summer, coached by her dad, Tiger. Incredible arena player as well, Summer Nice. Covered her quite a bit here on the USPA Polo Network. So mm -hmm. I think we'll see a lot out of her here today. And a big clutch goal, getting her team right back in it. I tell you what, I love watching her walk that horse back. Both these young ladies walking back with loose reins. You know, these horses, they're nice and calm. They're not jazzed up. They're just, they're, they're strolling back to the center, which is very nice. I'm not, let's see. Yeah, and well, Naomi Marlowe there, you can see she only started playing about three years ago, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, she did some show jumping previously, but the team aspect of polo really drew her in. You can see she started playing on the JV team at the Yale Polo Club. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what the holdup was there. But nevertheless, we've got our teams back on the field, ready to go. I think just uh, perhaps an all may change there. It looks like a couple ladies changing horses, Toby. Yeah, right around the three-minute mark. Maybe you're right. Yeah. I, I, uh, all right, here we go. Ball's back into play. Summer jumps on it, takes advantage of having the offensive side. She takes off running with Reagan in pursuit. Goes for the full swing. She gets hooked on the plate right there. Coming in, near side back shot attempt. And first one to get turned back around right here. Nice move. But it looks like it's going to be taken right here by Sophia Ward. Sophia. Trying to muscle her way through the defender. Sophia drops that ball back, and Summer gets there with that near side back shot. First one to read the play, though, is going to be Winnie. Looks over her shoulder right there, takes her time getting to the ball, then turns it. Now it takes off right here, goes ahead to get away from Lauren Patois. And it's going to be Lauren once again on that ball, jumping back on. It's going to be Reagan Leitner. I like this little black horse that Reagan's on here. My kind of horse right there. But here goes Summer once again, takes off running. Nice out in front and making a run to the goal as the other ladies are trying to tap the ball. Summer goes to the ball here on the near side. She makes her run. She gets going fast. Now she's going to be backed up right here by Rory, who takes her shot at the goal. This one's getting close. Ah, oh, tough break just wide over the back line. So we'll have a knock in here, our first of the day. And it's going to go in favor of Nebraska Sunset. Another great opportunity, just hitting that neck shot a little too close to the horse's foot. You can see not quite enough angle, and it goes just wide. Rory can't get back to it on the near side, but some great chances. You'd like to see the open style of play both of these teams are playing early here. Winnie takes this ball off to the left. She's being challenged right now by Lauren. Now, oh, yeah, they're going to catch Lauren here, I would think, for reaching. Trying to use those long arms to her advantage, but the refs caught her toes. Looks like a <laughs> hot hit here. Yeah, we'll Let's get another look at it right here. One more time. Great horse there by Winnie. Didn't have the position, but the horse gave her a little extra push there, and she catches. I think that was uh, that Lauren. Was Lauren there, excuse me, on yep. the reach. 
Okay, so yeah, you're right. Pull up spot hit. I was thinking maybe they'd go to uh, center, but it looks like they're going to go with a spot hit here. Winnie brings the ball into play and then hits it. Oh, breaks her mallet, takes the head right off of her mallet. As Summer comes in, takes that ball with her. Summer Nice looking good, going for it right here. Oh, sorry. It's going to be Reagan Leitner with the ball. Summer was looking for the whistle. Reagan takes her time, and now Summer will come up with the ball. She's going to turn this one back around, keeps it to herself, goes ahead, goes to check. I thought she was going to try to check right there, but it looks like she's going to get hooked on the play. And the next one to it. Nice pickup right here on the near side by Rory. And now Lauren is there to back her up. Lauren working both sides of the horse, but gets hooked by the boards. And now it's going to be Summer right there looking for a defensive play. Coming in, Reagan will jump back on it on this good-looking little black horse. Reagan, I like how she uses both hands to shut down right there. Helps the horse by using both hands. Now the ball gets picked up here. Here comes the shot towards the goal from Hinkson. And another one right here from... Uh, over the back line wide. So we'll get a, a knock in here for Delta Dawn, but I don't believe that's going to come until the beginning of trucker number two because we're out of time. So both teams will get some fresh horses and we'll be back after this quick break right here on the USPA Polo Network. Together before, so I think the practice definitely helped, but I think we just need to trust each other and talk a lot. And it's the same thing every year. I mean, you don't know who you're playing with and you just got to get to know each other in a really short time. But I think we got to trust each other and be aggressive and have fun, you know? Together. I remember losing to Summer for like three years in Nationals in the II season. <laughs> He's talked about how we need to back each other up and how we have to pay attention. And if Summer's going on a run, we have to see and decide whether we should go up for the pass or whether we should follow behind. And he really stressed the importance of everybody has to stay tight on a man. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a really good experience and it's great to meet people from all over the country and ride some fabulous horses. Like last year, it was hosted at La Herradura, and that was an amazing experience because I'd never been to Memo Gracita's place, and it was gorgeous. Like, and I got to meet so many new people, and it's really friends that you're gonna see everywhere. Teamwork, um, I mean, playing with such amazing players like Summer, and Rory, and Lauren. Um, and this is my first year playing in this, so it's super exciting to be with them and to get to learn from them as much as I learned from my coaches. <coughs> okay, here we go. Always nice to hear from the ladies. And... Uh, we're going to have a knock-in here to start this next chucker off. I believe it's going to be a Delta Dawn knock-in for the yellow. We Great interview there with the Delta Dawn ladies, of course, talking about their coach, Santi Torres. Incredible coach for the team. And you know Santi pretty well as well, Toby. He's not the most outspoken guy, but I'm sure what he says really gets across to these ladies. He is a fantastic polo mine. And one of those guys comes from an incredible polo family. His dad, Miguel, his brother, Megalito, incredible polo players. Hey, he's the polo kid. Remember the movie? He is. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's funny. You know, he's one of those guys. He's very soft-spoken, uh, but he's really funny when you get to know him. And um, he's got a great sense of humor, but like you said, a, a fantastic polo mine. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited to see him getting an opportunity to do some coaching here. We've seen him play a lot in the high goal over the years. Actually, I got to play with him in um, when he was 12 years old, I think, in the uh, in the President's Cup. And he was two goals worth about five. And um, yeah, unbelievable player. Uh, I remember. Yeah, he was he was even back then. Rarely, he, he didn't speak. He didn't talk a whole lot. But when he did, it was always something that was uh, worthy of of. of of listening to that's for sure here we go the ball's in play summer is look at her directing her teammates saying hey you need to be up there go for that pass coming in now it'll be picked up here by winnie she's going to take this one back to the right now back to the inside of summer she hits the ball forward it gets deflected summer's going to take it with her here on this gray horse summer niece takes this one keeps it to herself i like her and uh 
Reagan are both using two hands to shut those horses down. It helps when you shut down with two hands. Sometimes you see kids will use just one hand to shut down. It makes it more difficult for the horse to shut down and for yourself. You end up wearing yourself out. So I love seeing these two young ladies using two hands to shut down. Here comes a shot from Reagan. Tries to get out of the air. Couldn't quite do so. It's still on the field. Going to be backed right here. And oh, well done. Look at that. What a play. Hanks in. Uh, and we get a whistle right here in the goal mouth. Is it penalty one territory? We'll find out here in a moment. Well, Toby, just going back to what you were saying, I think generally across the board, incredible riders, especially here in the girls division at the Knights. Again, a lot of these ladies started in other disciplines and then mm -hmm. came to polo. Obviously, a few grew up in the sport. I know Reagan Leitner began as a barrel racing rider. I love that. Which makes some sense when you see the way she rides and like you said, that is a good point you made, Toby, that these girls, especially if you're a younger player or new to the game, watch these ladies use their mallet hand to help them out, stop the horse, get that horse shut down quicker, and then you can let go and get back to the ball. Exactly. And, and you know, it, honestly, it does. It, it, it helps the horse, too, when you use two hands, you know, because then you're not jerking the horse in the mouth. It's a smooth pull, and it, and it helps them shut down, and it's, uh, and it's a lot easier on them. All the way around. So penalty number two here goes in favor of Nebraska Sunset, giving them a chance to give themselves a goal and a half lead right now. Reagan seems to have no trouble. She sends it straight on through and picks up the point. Beautifully done right there for Reagan Leitner, her second goal of the game, both of which come from the penalty line. So we'll likely see Reagan hitting most of their penalties. We'll wait and see if she's going to hit the 60s as well or perhaps hand those off to Winnie. But Reagan has been a very consistent penalty shooter over the years here. Okay, here we go. Out in front, Reagan with that nice big half swing right there. I like to see that. She takes her time. She avoids the hook here. She's down in front. She's in the red zone. Summer tries to get to her. Summer makes the hook, leaves the ball there, and the next one to it. Nice pickup right here by Winnie. She's going to follow up. Did she? She got it. Yeah. Send it on through and gives her team even more of a lead here on the board. What a start to this game for the team in pink. Watch this finish coming up. The hook on the play. Winnie takes her man wide, goes to the near side. Branscom, little emotion too after the goal. Yeah, you love to I love that. that. And you know, Toby, I was going to say, I like. The dynamic play here, we saw Winnie playing that, you know, number one as the lowest rated player on her women's open team. And here she is playing number four and really controlling the game. Mm. Doing a good job right here. Now, you know, the other thing is you, you got to remember uh, in, a, in a four chucker game, it, you know, uh, it's it's you, if you, a team gets hot like this Nebraska Sunset team has gotten here where they've put four goals on the board in, in less than two chuckers, it can be very difficult for uh, for the other team to come back so they really can't afford to get to let any of these opportunities get away from them like this summer niece takes off she's going to let winnie have this shot on goal now or back shot i should say and now it's going to be picked up and turned right back around here open back shot i like that and now summer jumps on it turns the ball back around gets away from those defenders summer going to the goal out in front gets hooked on the play next one there is going to be lauren who sends it back at the goal it's there in the goal mouth and winnie and Naomi jumps on that ball. Now Summer back on it. Summer takes this one through the pack right here. She takes a shot at the goal. Summer going to go ahead and drain it. Well done, Summer. I love that. She stays calm under pressure, sends it on through, picks up the point, and brings her team one step closer to tying this game back up. Well, not tying this game up, but either getting in the lead or, uh, or getting close to it. Once again, Summer Nice. In front of the goal mouth, showing some good skill and a nice finish there. And you mentioned it, yeah, that pesky half goal. Either save you or kill you at the yeah. end. No matter what, we cannot have a tie. But, you know, that half goal basically acts as a goal there one way or another. You Essentially, have yeah. You either gotta, you're going to win or lose by it. And look at this. When he takes off again right here, Branscombe going to the goal, looking good. Nice approach. I'm telling you, this is a very fast field too, Cody. If you've ever, if you've never had the chance to play on it, it's one of those, and it proves to be really nice too. A very true bounce, as we just saw from that run right there from Winnie. She picks up her third goal of the game and gives her team a two and a half goal lead on the board. 
Wow, what a game here. What a first half for Winnie Branscombe. And yeah, you said it. Beautiful field, playing really well. Like you said, playing fast. So you get that first approach shot. And if nobody's caught up to you, you're just gone on a breakaway. And really not much bounce at all. That ball just laying flat on the field. Looks like we'll have a, a mid chucker horse change. That's the same black horse when he finished the first chucker on. And there's from, from that bridle there. Yeah. And there's Jesse Bray coaching the uh, Nebraska Sunset team here. So each coach has has uh, double duties. They're, they're, they're both, they're all coaching uh, two teams. Here's a good little, some info there from uh, on, uh, on, on Winnie. Talking about winning that U.S. Open Women's Polo Championship with the Fay. That was a very exciting game. Very exciting tournament, too, for that matter. And we did see in the background just moments ago, I just have to give a little shout out. Toby and I. I was going to, too. Brain, brains on the ground, feet on the ground, Christina Fernandez. Yeah, and she was talking to Kaylee Roos, photographer. Kaylee Roos, photography. She's a fantastic photographer. She was up in Wyoming this summer, and uh, she's a great polo player, too. Wanted to mention as awesome. well, Winnie, her favorite horse is a 17-year-old horse named War, was actually bred for polo by Adolphus Orthwine, which is Steve Orthwine's grandfather. Here we go. Yeah, I believe she she uh, she told us a little bit about that horse and said that uh, she started on him in uh, in the in the women's U.S. Open this past year. Yeah, it was a horse that was sort of born with abnormal teeth, and nobody really wanted her. But she wasn't you know wasn't thriving in a big organization, so Steve decided she was better off with Winnie's mom, who's a vet, who could kind of care for her well you know properly, and she thrived and has now gone everywhere with Winnie, including winning multiple best playing pony awards including this year's girl central and her scholastic regional best playing pony and as you mentioned she started on her first chucker of the women's u.s open all right here we go balls back into play and we get a whistle right here stopping the clock our mounted officials alejandro garcia del rio and robert linky chow and there's alejandro there robert linky chow one closer to us on the left hand side of the screen Take another look at the replay here. You can see Reagan was reaching underneath. Summer going for the near side. I think Summer had the right to the play there. All Spot right. Hit. Okay. Turning this ball back around. Here we go. Getting on a run right now. Looking good. It's going to be Ava Rose. She's out in front. Ava now works back to the near side right here. Looks good. She's down in front. Summer lets her go. And Summer right there. Let her have this one. And I, I don't, you know, Summer's in that kind of in a tough spot there. She sees that, <clears throat> excuse me, the ball is bouncing a little bit there for, for Ava. So does she go and sacrifice herself there or does she try to play for the miss? And this, and this, opportunity, and this play in this uh, situation here, it didn't work out for Summer. And um, Ava stayed calm right there and was able to pick up the point and put the ball between the posts. Yeah, great way to describe it there, staying calm. <laughs> to her near side didn't bother put it on through for the score might have learned that one from joey casey ava rose hinkson started playing polo with her dad but then went over to joey casey's for some lessons and the rest is history the hall of famer joey casey okay here we go it's gonna be reagan gets hooked there by summer and then the ball's left behind we're down to about the two minute mark here left in the first half coming in next one to get there it looks like it's going to be rory tries for that next shot bounces off the horse's hoof hits a back shot this time she gets the shot off but it's picked up here by ava once again ava turns the ball back looks good she keeps it to herself she takes it across the goal right here she fires this one down and now lauren comes in here to put some pressure on ava Lauren wins the ride off, doesn't connect on the back shot, and here comes Winnie to back her up. Winnie goes ahead, accelerates, gets away from her defender there. Now, Winnie takes her neck shot, centers this one up, but here comes Lauren Patois and picked up. Look at this. What a play right here. Beautiful goal by Ava Rose Hankson, her second of the chucker. And, man, what a chucker this is. This is going to be a fifth goal of the game here in chucker number two, or should I say fifth goal of the second chucker here for this uh, Nebraska Sunset team. 
And again, just great awareness from Hinkson waiting for the ball there. She didn't have a play, checked up, waited for the miss, found it and put it in back-to-back -back goals for Ava. And again, another note on Ava, which stuck out to me, Toby, she mentioned meeting Sunny Hale and Sunny was a big role model for her. And that sort of cemented the fact that she wanted to pursue polo. But what sticks out for me is Ava mentions Hope Ariano being a huge role model, not only for her, but a lot of other girls. And, you know, I must say, I think Hope is a role model for not just young girls. I think just young polo players, any polo player really in general. I agree with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. She's uh, she's definitely she's the real deal. And, and she's got the great the work ethic. She's a wonderful person. Um, she loves the game. She works hard at it, and, and she's been rewarded for her hard work. Here comes Summer Nice, another one right here that I think has potential to be, uh, uh, you know, as she gets older and gets more experience, she's going to get better and better and better in this game. Summer Nice there, but look at Reagan. Gets out of there. Gets the ball stolen, though, by Summer. As I'm talking about her, she steals the ball away. And, well, looks like we might have run out of time here. So we're going to find out what the play is going to be, but that won't come until after halftime. So stay with us right here on the USPA Polo Network. We'll be back after this quick halftime break. 7 to 2.5 is the score with Nebraska Sunset in the lead. Friendships is such an amazing place because you make friends for life. Like, I know that I've played with and against people that I will forever know. And it's just such a fun atmosphere. On and off the field, it's a completely different vibe than if I was going to go play in basically any tournament that wasn't Knights. And then champion, the championships in particular is a, fan, is a fantastic tournament. The USPA does an amazing job organizing it and catering to uh, the age group, you know, because it is different. And I know that we all have a blast on the field and it ends up being very competitive, but also very fun. I have... I have only played with Ava. Ava's actually been in St. Hey. Louis this year. Hey. Um, and so we, uh, did I play with you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, well, I played with Sophia as well. <laughs> when did I play with you? Nights like a year ago. Okay, well, I have played with Sophia and, <laughs> I have played with Sophia and Ava and off the field, Reagan and I are besties. So, I mean, we just have that connection walking yeah. on the field, if you ask me. We haven't been able to talk to him about the, the team tomorrow. But what we did talk about the tent uh, was that we had to be better defensively. You know, Winnie and I got to sharpen up a little bit, turning and, you know, turning our heads, getting more prepared, not just talking, but also looking. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, for the girls, getting ready to jump on the ball, like as soon as it turns around, as soon as the play turns around, barking for each other, going for the passes, that sort of thing. Yeah, we were. Jesse was really kind of like, definitely like, enforcing that like the field is so big so like use it to your advantage like push your man forward have give your players that time because you know an outdoor especially you, you have that time so you need to use it and make the most of it excited for the semis tomorrow i think he really helped us like or he was talking to me about being faster on offense because I'm more of a defensive player. So he helped me kind of figure that out. And then I think in the second two chuckers, we came out a lot stronger. So I think that'll be really helpful. Uh, I was actually supposed to play in the one in Florida and then we had another tournament that kind of got changed. So I was super bummed that we couldn't play in Fort Mayaka. Um, so we ended up packing the horses up this summer and you know going to St. Louis and Missouri and in Chicago. And it was our first time taking horses across state lines, which was always a new experience. So that was a lot of fun, lots of learning. I am more of an II player and I just finished my last II season. I just graduated and finished my last II season. So I got invited to go to St. Louis and I was like, oh, I'll just go play in this tournament for fun. And then like a month later, I get this email saying like, you're invited to finals. And I was like, all right, time to start practicing and working hard because I was just kind of playing for fun since then. Like I haven't really had any big tournaments or anything. Like I've just been hanging out. So I was like, all right, time to time to grind. Like gotta do it. And then I think I was able to prepare myself adequately to play at this level which i think was a little difficult but i figured newbridge is a very unique club it's not only a polo club but it's a residential community as well it's a nice mix of friendly but also elegant you know, and the biggest thing is it's close to town. Uh, it's a gated community, a place that has room to play. It's got room to ride and room to live. 
The concept of this property is essentially to emulate what they've got in South America, and particularly in Argentina as far as country club living, with the focal point being on the sport of polo. Uh, you know, people that live here love it here. At first, watching the games, I was like, this is, this is like a war of cavalry. Once you learn the rules of the game and you start learning how to ride, uh, it doesn't feel like that at all inside the field. The first time I saw the game that I said, I, I can do this. There's no feeling like it in the world. I would say try it. Chances are you're gonna get obsessed right, right as you start. The main philosophy of Centennial Partnerships is to mitigate risk for diversification. And that includes a group of horses and a group of people. But we don't want to take away the experience and the fun of the sport, so we limit the number of people in each partnership. We try to make the experience for people as exciting and as memorable as possible. All right, welcome back everyone to the USP Polo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number three. And man, what a first half Nebraska Sunset had there. Uh, lots of fun listening to the ladies talk during their interview there that we, we, sh we, got sh we shot with them yesterday. So um, obviously, Coach Jesse Bray has, has lined these young ladies out very nicely. And, uh, and they are really performing well here so far. What do you think, Cody? Absolutely, Toby. Just a very solid first half. And you mentioned it earlier, a four chucker game. So it's going to be very difficult for Delta Dawn to come back. Not impossible, but they're going to have to come out of the gates flying here and really shut down the Nebraska Sunset offense, which is much easier said than done. I agree with you on that. You know, and we were talking about that half goal earlier. Effectively, you, with the half goal, you know, like you said, it it counts as a goal essentially because you you gotta you gotta you gotta put an extra point on the board in order to get that half goal to win the game, either win or lose. But you know, it just guarantees no overtime, essentially. You got your right. horse list here. Yeah, if you're Delta Dawn, you need to score five to get this game tied. But if you do score five, you're all of a sudden magically up by that half goal. Exactly. All right, here we go. Ball's back into play. It's going to be a quick back shot right here from Rory setting up Summer. Nice. This is what we need to see right here for Delta Dawn to get back in this game. Summer needs to get there, but it looks like Reagan's going to stay with her. Summer, near side, next shot. 
moves that ball down the field as Reagan just goes straight to Summer and takes her out. Then Summer jumps back on this ball. Good read from Summer Knees. Couldn't quite get back to it. You know, a little help from the horse. Kicks that ball at the goal. It's going, going. Near side back shot there from Reagan. And it's going to be taken here by Naomi. And S Summer comes in and we get a whistle stop in the clock. Well, Hinkson was sort of undecided here going for the play and finally reaches over and I think comes across the front end there of Naomi. Yeah, a couple of different sorry, things happened. So, that oh, sorry, like... of Sophia. Yeah, Sophia. Uh-oh. Improper blocking. I saw the hand on the head. I'm thinking... No. Yeah. Yep, that is. It is. All right. So that's a tough one. But Delta Don will certainly take it. So improper blocking there on the spot hit for against Nebraska Sunset. Mm -hmm. Really an unforced error, you know? Yeah. And see, I don't even think, I don't even think uh, she realizes that she's in the wrong place right there. Who's that? Ava? Ava Rose? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Ava standing in the way there, and Lauren Patois heads up play, just appeals to the umpires. They caught it. So penalty four, it looks like, here for Summer Knees and Delta Dawn. Summer rides up, makes a short approach. Whoa. And it looks good. Good job there for, for uh, Reagan to jump off. Looks like the ball might have hit the horse right in the nose, just enough to kind of stun her a little bit there. But Reagan quickly dismounted, did not want to get stuck and, and end up pulling the horse over on top of her. So a very smart play there from, from Reagan, just showing off that athletic ability that she has. And uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with this young lady. She is, she is, uh, she's playing very well. And like I said, she's an acrobat. I mean, she's, she's very athletic too on top of that. Absolutely. Again, mentioned she, she was first, Seen competing in the extreme Mustang makeover in Jacksonville. It was Catherine Thomas from the a Aiken Polo Club saw her and her sister, twin sister, actually Robin, who we'll see later on competing and invited them out to play. And ever since then, she's been playing spring and fall seasons at the Aiken Polo Club. I didn't realize it was Katie that, that uh, re recruited Reagan and her sister. That's really interesting. Okay. So we'll wait, yeah, we'll just wait for Reagan to mount back up. Up, oh, they got kind of jumped on the golf cart. That'll make things a little quicker there. It could be a little time out here. I'm not sure unless we're going back down the other way. It looks like these ladies are just giving their horses some air here. A minute into chucker number three. So I was I was kind of curious about uh, Summer. She made a very short approach shot right there. But I tell you what I did like, even though it was a bit shorter of, a, of an approach than, than I would say um, than, than you would normally see, I did like the fact that she kind of went to that ball with a bit more speed and used that horse's momentum to help her get some power on that ball instead of just using all arms. So I really I think that's a, a really smart idea on, on Summer's part. I'd like to see her get a re-hit or uh, another penalty four, because I'd love to see what she can get done if she makes just a bit bigger of an approach shot. Well, near you can see a little fun fact. Rory Knox was taught to ride at six years old by Kelly Wells. So it's just some fantastic polo coaches and teachers we're finding out for all of these ladies. And another interesting fact here, if you're curious about the team names, actually all of the team names in the girls' division here are all Hall of Fame horses. That's right. And Delta Dawn was a gray thoroughbred mare trained by Cecil Smith, owned by Norman Brinker, and played by Roy Berry. Norman bought her from Cecil as a four-year-old when she was just a ranch horse. She won the Hartman Award as Best Playing Pony in the 1974 U.S. Open Polo Championship. She was known for her great attitude, determination, and speed. She was named after a song that was popular at the time. <laughs> and she was, again, she ended up playing in the 1980 U.S. Open Polo Champion before retiring at the age of 12 and then was finally elected to the Hall of Fame in 2003. So 
So that is Delta Dawn. Delta Dawn, yeah. Roy, <clears throat> Roy Berry is, uh, you know, he's a, he's a bigger guy. But um, one thing about Roy is he he what I was always told. My dad always told me, you know, Roy rode so light. Um, I mean, he's six foot five, you know. Uh, and and in his heyday, you know, he was six foot five, two forty, but rode like he, you know, like, like light as a feather. And so uh, I'm. I think it's really fun that, that they use these uh, Hall of Fame horse names here for the team names. All right, here we go. The ball's back into play. Good read right here. And it's going to be Reagan to jump on that ball and take off running right now. Reagan, if nothing else, burning up valuable time here as she avoids the hook. Now, Leitner, it looks like she might be losing her, her uh, saddle pad there. And it's going to be, she's backed up right now by Ava. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, that's Sophia Ward. Sophia right there works the ball down. Sophia right to left. Now she's backed up here again. That is the real Ava Rose here. Takes her shot, sends it back towards the goal, coming in. Reagan tries to get there, and now it's going to be picked up right here by Winnie. And she takes her shot at the goal, and it looks like it's going to be just over the back line wide. So we'll get a knock in here for Delta Dawn. A rare miss by Winnie Branscombe in Nebraska Sunset, giving Delta Dawn the knock in again like to see them get something going here. Summer Nice has definitely been their best weapon offensively, but if she gets going forward on a run, she needs a little more support from her teammates. They've been a little far away from her at times. Okay. Uh-oh. Here we go. He's going to be – Reagan doesn't connect with that ball the way she wants. Now so it's going to be uh, Lauren there to back her up. Lauren Patois. Lauren. Avoids the hook here. Again, looking good, making the, the run back around, but Reagan gets the back shot off. And uh, next one there. There you go. Quick back shot to set up Reagan. Here we go. Reagan out in front going to the goal once again. I love that half shot she's got there. She's going to try to protect the ball, but a great back shot. And picked up here again by Winnie. Winnie's going to shoot at the goal. Winnie's shot. It's rolling, rolling. Now taken by Summer. And it's still on the field for the moment. Now we've got a safety. Heads up play there by Branscombe, realizing that ball was going over the end line, last touched by Nice. So a safety penalty six here for Nebraska Sunset. Tough play for Nice in front of the goal. Just didn't get that shot off. And here you can see Winnie thinking about it and just deciding we'll take was, it from yeah. this 60. She was set up right there. She's like, Ooh, should I make a play? Should I not? And then she decided not to and let the ball roll. But she was right there in case that ball died on the line. She was ready to go if she needed to, if she needed to, uh, to hit that ball. Okay. Winning. Said her, uh, her polo role model was uh, Steve Orthwine Sr. Takes her shot towards the goal. Now Summer's going to come in here and meet the ball and take off running back the other way. Summer needs to complete a drive right here. She's taking her time. Summer winds up and hits it hard. Now she's going to let Winnie come in and catch up to her. She'll take Winnie, and now she goes to the near side here, stays with it. Reagan takes it forward. Here comes... Oh, everybody overrides. And now Reagan jumps back on that loose ball and takes off the other way. And there you go. Reagan gets out on a run right here, and she goes ahead and lets the horse stretch out and run. I was kind of surprised we didn't see Summer do the same thing there. She tried to shut down, come back to it. Now, coming in, Winnie's there on the ball. Winnie tried to get to it, couldn't quite get the shot she needed, and puts the ball over the back line. So we'll have another knock in here for Delta Dawn. Well, back-to-back -back chances and misses by Winnie Branscombe, but you mentioned earlier, valuable seconds ticking off the clock here, and they're doing a good job of at least just keeping Delta Dawn pinned back in their own end here. Okay. Here comes Winnie to take this one back around with her. Now stolen right away here by Rory. Rory. I like that name too, Aurora. That's a really cool name. Now, next one to get to it's going to be Lauren Patois. Lauren takes off after going first near side, then back to the offside. Fights that bouncing ball. Can't quite get it under control. Now she's backed up here by Rory, who sends it forward. Now coming back to it, here comes a near side back shot. And it looks like they're going to catch her falling over the right away after the shot here. 
Well, Toby, I grew up just north of Toronto and currently not too far away from Aurora, Ontario. So I actually particularly Rick like and- that name too. <laughs> there you go. All right. Here's a look at the replay one more time. And yeah, you'll see Ava just falling over the line after the shot there. Delta Dawn certainly needs a little momentum going their way, and they very much need a goal right here. Still got another chucker to go after this, so there is time left, but they really need to to get one on the board. That's for sure, this Delta Dawn team. Well, and just wanted to mention again, we saw Winnie Branscombe have a couple chances. She really you know, eat, sleeps, breathes, polo, horses. That LaFay team didn't knew what they were doing when they scouted her for the U.S. Open Women's Polo Championship. Remember, she's from the St. Louis <clears throat> Polo Club where she actually helps manage that club. She brought all her own horses here. She brought all her own horses down to Florida for the U.S. Women's Open, Toby, if you remember that. She kept them up uh, in Port Mayaca and every single day took care of her own horses. And That's right. A lot of these ladies, a lot of the kids here in the Knights tournament do the same thing, you know, wake up every single day. They don't have grooms necessarily. Some of them have their parents here field side, helping them get tacked up and ready for these games. A lot of hard work goes in behind the scenes. Boy, I remember being a kid and grooming for myself. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it may sound kind of bad, but man, it, it was so not fun to have to groom. <laughs> Uh, tournament games for yourself by yourself you know tack them up untack and but i got good i was quick now i could i could tack and untack uh, uh you know a horse get them squared away inside of three minutes you know untack the first one get right back on the second one and i didn't i didn't have you know six saddles to, to have them all saddled up right away i only had two saddles you know so I, i'd have to change bridle saddles the whole nine yards i got good at it it was not fun but i tell you what it was a valuable lesson learned that's for sure because uh Oh, look at this little horse of Summers. I like this horse right here. I think, is this the one she started on in the first chucker? It might be, Toby. I don't want to, I don't want to speak incorrectly, but yeah. it looks similar. She has some incredibly nice horses. I think, well, there we go. That's what they needed. Delta Dawn gets on the board now, finally here in the in the third chucker. So they put one point uh, uh, on the board in each chucker so far. All three have come off the mallet of Summer Neats. Nicely done there. Summer Nice getting her team a little bit closer. Still a four goal gap, but four goals will give them the lead. It will be tough, but not impossible here. They just really haven't had any consistent momentum going. Like you said, just one goal per chucker, and they've really been on their heels most of the game. Okay, here comes Reagan with a tail shot there. Sending it back around. No, no, she's fine there. Now it's going to be picked up right here. Summer tries to get to that ball, picked up now by Lauren. Lauren takes that ball through. Reagan, Patois, working it down. Lauren goes ahead. She shoots towards the goal, tries to get away from Winnie. Winnie wait, wins the ride off right here, but look at this. Rory coming in. Can she get there? Nicely done. And Delta Dodge right back in this polo game. Seven to four and a half is now the score. And they finally, just like you were talking about, get some momentum built up here, and they get two in a row. Back-to-back goals, Nebraska Sunset cannot get complacent. And Delta Dawn, hopefully this gives them some confidence and the momentum to keep going here. Beautiful finish by Rory Knox. Okay. Back to the center we go. And it looks like this is going to give the Nebraska Sunset team the offensive side of the throw. And watch Reagan. She'll stay on the outside right here and pick up this ball. Nope. It's going to be going the other way right there. Off to the races we go. Naomi Marlowe. By herself on a breakaway, being chased down right now. Naomi avoids the hook. She's looking good. She's going straight to the goal right here. Great back shot to break up the play. The next one there, going to be taken right here. Look at this. Uh, Reagan, look at that move that horse made for. That horse moves like a barrel horse. I'll tell you that right now. And now it's going to be winning. And Rory after Naomi. And now picked up again right here. Uh-oh. Looks like we'll get a whistle on this play stopping the clock. And this one looks like it'll probably go in favor of Delta Dawn. I would tend to agree with you here. You could see a little emotion from the Nebraska Sunset ladies. 
right after this play. Take a look right there. I think you'll see a reach in front. Good drone work. Yeah, pretty easy call there for the officials. That will put Summer Nice on the penalty line, and things have officially got interesting here, Toby, especially if Summer Nice can drain this penalty. Penalty number two here coming up for Delta Dawn. Great, like I said, great drone work there from Fuzzy. And Summer has no trouble putting it straight between the goalposts, picks up the point, and now we've got a ball game here, a goal and a half difference on the board as we come back to center once again. Yeah, that might might not be enough time for another bowl in either way here now. But a whole Pressure other really on Nebraska Sunset. What a chucker here for the team in yellow. And these ladies, they've got a really good chance now of completing this comeback and perhaps winning this game in the final chucker of play. Can they get this one off before the horn? Yeah, it looks like they will. And Summer tries to get to it. Looks like, well, I believe we got a whistle. Either way, we'll find out what the play is going to be after both teams come back out with fresh horses underneath them to start the final chucker of this, our first of four games here this morning on the USPA Polo Network. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. From Denver, Colorado, back to Texas to turn out the horses for the summer. And uh, I was going to do some work in this fall in, in Texas, and they called me to come out here for the week. I guess we started kind of, kind of felt out the the kids, and just to see where they where they were at with with the polo and everything, and to see a couple of chuckers of what plays they did, and then and then I came in to help them with uh, what I know, and and then just help them through each and every play. Um, I've played with a lot of different people and a lot of different um, skilled players. So uh, just kind of we kind of started picking plays apart and and went from there. I um, I spent a bunch of time with the Lacaricas this summer, um, Joe Bob and Lily. Um, Joe Bob's a solid young player, um, very talented, good rider. Um, Lily also. Um, She's uh, Joe Bob's bigger sister that's a good rider. Um, I think Will Mudra, is, uh, I've played against him in the past in uh, Houston. He's a strong player and he's improved a lot with the ball and, and uh, all around in the game. So I think we, we have a good, uh, good back with him and then uh, Joe Bob in the middle. And then I think uh, I just uh, started seeing Robert Castaro play. Um, talented kid. I don't know how much exposure he's gotten, um, you know, traveling and going other places to play with people, but but he's gone a good path. On our ladies team, we have a, a very strong player that can play kind of any anywhere on the field. Right now, she's going to play um, start start at back, but obviously in polo we kind of switch around with with uh, our positions. But we have Summer Nice, uh, who's very strong. And then um, I've uh, been playing with Lauren Patois these past few summers. Uh, she's, she's been playing awesome. And then the other two um, girls that are on the team, um, I just started watching them play here. Um, and every chucker, they were doing better and better. So I think we, we kind of got a, a plan together for, for the ladies. All right, welcome back here. Getting ready to start chucker number four, final chucker of the first game. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that uh, that last play. Yeah, another foul here against Nebraska Sunset coming up. You see that ball takes a deflection. It's, I believe hmm. that was Sophia Ward in the front there, just coming across, took it on the wrong side. Penalty five from the spot awarded there. And we get another whistle here. I tell you what, it's been a fairly fairly clean game we've had so far here. Yeah, not a ton of whistles. Like I said, both teams playing a good open style of polo. Another foul here. And I think this time it's finally going in Pink's favor. Take another look. There's the back shot. They may have just caught Naomi riding over top of the ball there before that back shot from Leitner. Either way, spot hit upcoming for Nebraska Sunset. Okay, here we go. Penalty five from the spot. That's her first five of the day. Winnie, uh-oh, not what she meant to do there. Reagan comes in to back her up, though. Ah, this is the little black horse right here that Reagan's on. Now, 
coming back around here. It is kicked forward. Nicely done. Working this ball again. It's going to be a nice play here by Ava. Now, back shot. Nicely done there from Rory. Knox. And now picked up again here by Naomi Marlowe. Marlo gets taken out right there as it's going to be Winnie to come in here and pick up the play. Winnie with a back shot, looking to set up her team. By the way, uh, that last chucker was a great chucker there for Delta Dawn. They, they were able to win that chucker 3-0, to zero, so they kept Nebraska Sunset off the scoreboard in the third chucker and put three points on the board. Now, next one around here, it's going to be picked up again by Lauren. She's going to take off right here and... Nicely done. Nice pickup right here from Ava Rose. Ava leaves it there for Regan or Reagan Leitner. Reagan. Back shot here. And it's going to be taken again. Summer comes in looking to pick up the ball. She's got that ball there under control. Takes it to the left and goes ahead and decides to make a run right here. But Reagan comes in, takes her out. Summer pulls out of the play. Let's Reagan have it. Reagan is going to pick up a whistle right here. They're going to catch. Uh, Nebraska Sunset for riding into the back shot, I think. Great job initially there by Leitner to take out Summer Nice early on that play. Looked like Summer probably had the faster horse, but Reagan had position there. She took her out coming back to the back shot, and I think we'll... I like to see she stopped her swing there. Did not just go ahead and, and take that swing either. Yeah, drawing the foul, riding into the back shot. Uh-oh. Winnie, her shot is going to be picked up here by Ava again. And now Lauren comes in to put some pressure on her. Near side back shot there to center this one up. First one to get turned is going to be Summer Nice. Nice play right here by Summer. She takes off running. Now Summer keeps that ball to herself, takes it back to the right of Winnie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now Summer gets onto a run right here. Looking good. Summer fighting with Winnie. Winnie's got the leg on her. Look at this horse push. Though. Both these horses push. Summer doesn't get enough of a win on that ride off there. Next swing into it. Going to be picked up here by Ava. She's going to get out of there. She gets hooked on the play. Here comes Reagan. Takes this ball with her. Reagan Leitner avoids the hook there from Summer. She keeps on going right here. She goes to the near side. Man, look at this young lady go. She is awesome. Reagan, I love her half shot. Comes back to it on the offside. Working hard right here. Man, she has improved. Swings through the hook of Lauren. Out in front. Down in the red zone. Whoa, what a goal. Reagan. That's the goal of the game, in my opinion, right there. Cahuga Dora, beautifully done. Reagan Leitner, love that horse, love that swing. What a player. Well, that horse has plenty of speed, doesn't it, Toby? Goal of the day, goal of the game might be the goal of the day. We'll be hard-pressed to see a better goal and an end run. What a finish. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. You said it. That was awesome. That was fantastic. What a goal and an important goal, too, for Nebraska Sunset after Delta Dawn had scored three straight and held Nebraska Sunset scoreless last chucker. All right. Near side back shot there from uh, from uh, uh, Rory. Back over here to Naomi. Now picked up again by Summer. Summer gets some help from the horse who kicks that ball forward for her as Winnie keeps the pressure on her. She tries to get back to her on the offside. Now here comes the near side neck shot, sending the ball forward. Here comes Reagan with a near side back shot, open style, and it's going to be taken here by Summer. She got there quick enough before the other player can get on the right away. Summer goes ahead, drops the horse's head to get away from Reagan. Neck, now here comes Lauren Patois to back her up. Taking this ball forward. Looks like it's going to be Naomi. She's down in front. She's in the red zone. She goes near side. Ooh. And now nicely done right here. Here goes Ava Rose. Ava takes... The defender wide, comes back to it here on her near side. Doesn't connect as well as she'd like, and now she's going to be backed up there by Winnie. Branscom. Winnie goes hard to the man and then comes back to the ball off the boards. I like that play right there from Winnie. Now, gets it going here on the near side. Winnie fighting with Lauren. Now has to do it the hard way here on the near side. Finally, going to be Lauren to win that play, and she'll take the ball with her across the goal mouth. Lauren running hard right here. Now she's going to be clean right there all day. Lauren doesn't connect. And next one there is going to be Rory to back her up and send the ball back up to Lauren. But here comes Reagan Leitner. Reagan with a tail shot. Turns that one back and picked up again right here by Ava. Ava. Oh, might have got caught right there. Yep. Well, they definitely saved the best for last year, Cody. That's for sure. Absolutely, Toby. Here's another look at that last play. 
We lose sight of the ball as it comes back here. It just looks like might have been Ava there in the blue helmet. Coming over top of the ball, we'll wait for the official word. Great halftime interview with this Nebraska Sunset team. We heard a lot from Winnie Branscombe. Good little chuckle there with her and Sophia as Winnie was recounting all of her teammates that she had played with in the past. I guess she forgot one, Toby, but, you know, when you're playing U.S. Open, you tend to forget, you know, some of those. <laughs> but what a great player and, you know, good leader for this Nebraska Sunset team. Winnie is proving to be in that number four position, wearing that captain's armband. And I'm sure she learned a lot from playing in the U.S. Open with some phenomenal players, Pamela Flanagan, Hope Ariano, and Hazel Jackson. Well, I was going to say, you know, Pam Flanagan, you talked about how they scouted Winnie. Um, Pam Flanagan does take, you know, she she really does. I mean, she loves women's polo, and, and it's, uh, you know, in any form, but she especially loves the women's U.S. Open, and, and she does. She scouts for her team whoever it may be, uh, year, a year in advance, easily, you know, so you're right. So so I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she went to Winnie almost a year before before they actually played together in the Women's U.S. Open and asked her to be on that team. Pretty sure that's what she said. But, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal and, and, and um, a very big opportunity there for Winnie, and it just really showed that she's improved her game quite a bit here. All right, Rory takes this ball. Going to it right here, Rory. Knox. Horse kicks it four or kicks that ball out of the way, and now picked up again here by Ava. She loses control of the ball there to Naomi, and then gets the ball back under control. Here comes Ava. She's going to take off running once again. Ava looking good out in front, avoids the hook, goes with that half shot again. She's in the zone right now. She decides to check and let the defender go past her. Oh, tough break, but I like the thought process anyway. And now picked up again here by Reagan. I love that half shot of hers. She winds up, gets out over the ball, points her left shoulder out over the ball when she swings. Lots of fun to watch that young lady play. This one got away from her, but nevertheless, a great run. Yeah, under two minutes to go now. Will be tough for Delta Dawn. They can certainly get it done here. And, well, you know, just going back to that quickly, what you were talking about, Winnie playing in the U.S. Open, I think it's good motivation for all of the players in this tournament, especially the ladies, to yeah. realize, you know, this is a great platform to showcase your skills. A lot of people are watching. Yeah, what a play. Right, Toby, you never know who's watching. That's so true. You're right. Great play there by Reagan. Made the hook on Summer and then leaves that ball there. And great pickup here by, yeah, Winnie. And she's going to go ahead. Or excuse me. That's uh, Aurora, uh, Ava there. Yeah, Hinkson picking up her third goal of the day. Woof. Sounded like some war cries at the end, too. Nebraska Sunset ladies, I think, realizing – that was likely the final nail in the coffin. Here in the first semifinal, one foot through the door into the final of the 2023 Knights Girls National Championship. Yeah, and uh, you know that you got to go back to, to the start of that play was was Reagan making that hook on on uh, Summer and then turning the ball back, and then great position there for Ava to come in there, back her up, and pick up the point. Now we get a whistle here, stopping the clock, just under. Uh, just over 30 seconds left to go in the game. We'll get a spot hit, it looks like. Yeah, penalty five from the spot. And there's a little sandwich, it looks like. A sandwich. Reagan on the near side, out in front. Look at this young lady go again. I love her near side shot. She's in the zone. Right here, she leaves it behind. Next one there is going to be a back shot from Rory, picked up by... Winnie, now Summer looking for one more goal before the end of the game, but not on Reagan's watch. She got there, makes the hook, leaves the ball. Next one there, coming in. It's going to be Naomi making her run. Marlo trying to get away from Reagan. Reagan doesn't quit. She makes that back shot. Here comes another back shot there. Picked up on the near side by Rory. There she goes. Nice approach. Rory lets this one settle. She's there in the red zone looking to finish the game right here. And now with a goal. Over the back line, tough break there for Delta Dawn. That is going to be all but over now. So it looks like final score is going to be nine to five and a half. Nebraska Sunset 
secures their place in the finals of the 2023 National Youth Tournament Series Girls Division. Love to see the excitement from these ladies. They're going to the finals. Again, They two of these ladies were there last year on this team trying to get it done back-to-back -back years. Again, Delta Dawn, they had some good moments there. They really had a great third chucker. If this was a six-chucker game, maybe they could have completed the comeback. But all the credit goes to Nebraska Sunset. They really had a fantastic game. At number four right there, Winnie Branscombe had a fantastic game herself. But the whole team really got it done. Goals from Leitner, goals from Hinkson. Sophia Ward was a presence in the front as well, Toby. I think they're going to be a tough <clears throat> contender in the final. I agree. All right. For Cody Offen, I'm Toby Wayman. Thanks so much for tuning in to the USPA Polo Network. We'll be right back here pretty quick. I would say probably five, ten minutes for our second of our quadruple header here today. So stay with us. We're going to reset and be right back in just a few minutes.